Hello everyone and a warm welcome. This lecture is about infection and types of infection. There are terms related to infection and types of infection in which students often get confused. So to clear your doubts, watch this video till end. This video is helpful for students of medical microbiology, medical lab technology or nursing, MBBS, BDS and physiotherapy. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications of new videos. In this lecture, we are going to learn difference between infection and disease, classification of microorganisms into pathogen, saprophyte and commensal and what are different types of infection. So let's get started. The types of infection. Symptomatic versus asymptomatic, acute versus chronic, difference between active and latent infection, what is primary, what is secondary infection, reinfection, what are opportunistic, nosocomial and iatrogenic infections. First of all the terms infection and disease. Most often we think that infection and disease they are same. Here we are talking only of the disease which are because of the microorganisms, the microbial disease. Actually infection and disease, they are not same, they are different. Infection is defined as the entry and invasion of the host by the pathogen, its multiplication, its reaction with the host tissues and the toxins which produce the damage in the host body. So it is a long process which occurs in steps. Disease is the final outcome of infection process. After infection process, the disease is there. Infection may or may not be followed by disease. Sometimes the infection is there, but there is no disease. The medically important microorganisms, they can be classified as pathogen, parasite, saprophyte and commensal. What is pathogen? Pathogen is defined as an agent which is capable of causing the infection. Parasite, these are those microorganisms which are dependent on the host for the shelter and nourishment. If parasite is present outside the body of the host, it is called ectoparasite. If inside the host body, endoparasite. Saprophytes are those microorganisms which thrive on dead and decaying matter. They are not pathogenic, but sometimes they can result into the infection. Commensals are those microorganisms which live in harmony in mutualistic association with the host body. They may or may not benefit the host body. Sometimes they can cause the infection also. The pathogens are classified as viruses, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes which includes roundworms and the pinworms. Now coming to the types of infection, symptomatic versus asymptomatic infection. This classification is on the basis of the symptoms. Symptomatic infection is also called clinical infection. Here the symptoms are observed. On the other hand, in the asymptomatic infection, the symptoms they are absent. The patients appear to be normal. These are also called inapparent, silent or the subclinical infection. The other type is the latent or inactive infection. Here the pathogen is in the inactive, dormant or in the hidden form but it can get reactivated later and then can produce the infection. There are certain viruses like retroviruses which can produce the latent or the inactive infection in the host body. Next is the atypical infection. Here, the typical signs and the symptoms of the infection are absent. For example, in the case of typhoid fever, there is the high grade fever or ladder like pyrexia. But in some patients having the typhoid fever, the high grade fever ladder like pyrexia is not there. So those represent the atypical typhoid. Next types are the acute and the chronic infection. The acute infection is an infection for a short time. Here, the pathogen enters the host body, produces the infection and the host recovers. 
while the chronic infection is a long term long lasting infection it can last up to years also for example the aids tuberculosis leprosy cancer due to oncogenic viruses other terms are the primary infection and the secondary infection in which they usually there are certain doubts so what is primary infection as a name indicate it is primary so it is the initial infection in the host the host was normal before this infection the pathogen has entered for the first time and produced the infection the primary infection is produced because of the primary pathogen the secondary infection is in the host which is already infected by the primary infection so this host is already having an infection which is called the primary infection this primary infection is due to primary pathogen at the same time a secondary pathogen enters and then causes the secondary infection so secondary infection occurs in the presence of the primary infection the next is the reinfection reinfection is different from secondary infection the reinfection is the subsequent infection in the host by the same pathogen so here the host recovered by one infection and after that the same pathogen enters and then causes the infection for example the reinfection in the case of the tuberculosis next type of infection is the opportunistic infection these infections are also because of the pathogens the pathogens are called opportunistic pathogen this is not in the normal host but in the host who is having a weak immune system that immune system is weak because of some immunodeficiency because of some immunodeficiency infection like the aids or because of the prolonged use of the steroids so here the pathogen which are not virulent so they are called avirulent or the microorganisms which belong to the normal microflora they can cause an infection for example the mycobacterium avium complex causes the tuberculosis in the aids patient mycobacterium avium does not cause the infection in normal individual but it can cause the infection in the aids another example of the opportunistic infection is the clostridium difficile infection in the persons who are having a prolonged antibiotic treatment another example is the candidiasis it is the overgrowth of the yeast candida candida is present as a normal microflora in the mouth in intestine and in the vagina but when its number grows it grows in number in large amounts that is called the thrush the oral thrush in the mouth intestinal thrush and the vaginal thrush in the vagina next type is the focal infection so here the focal is derived from the foci the foci means the pathogen is localized it is present at a particular site but the signs they are seen generalized for example the infection of the appendix or the tonsils here the generalized effects they are seen the cross infections the cross infections are those infections in which the patient is already suffering from a disease note down this is the disease not the microbial disease but some other problem and here a uh, infection sets up from the another host from another external source or from the environment for example a patient has undergone this spinal cord surgery and the person is given the catheter in urinary tract so to pass the urine so at that time the person gets the uti this is called the catheter associated uti so this is an example of the cross infection next type is the nosocomial which is related to the cross infection nosocomial infections are actually the cross infections which are seen in the hospitals it is because of the visit to the hospital because of the stay in the hospital or because the paramedical staff or the medical staff who are taking the care of the patients for example the infection due to the methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus in the hospital settings these are also called the hospital acquired infections the next on the basis of the source of infection are the iatrogenic infection endogenous and the exogenous infection iatrogenic infections are those infections which are because of the negligence 
or because of the practices done by the professionals who are in the healthcare segment like the physician the healthcare workers the nurses the paramedical staff who are doing some preventive therapy from treatment therapy or diagnosis or other procedures for example if a physician has used a needle which has been previously used so it may induce the hepatitis or the aids or if a dentist is using the non sterile tools then it can result in the infection in the oral cavity the endogenous infections are those infection where the source of infection is present within the body that source can be the normal microflora or it can be a latent pathogen exogenous infection means the source is outside the host body next the infections can already classified on the basis of their occurrence if they are causing the outbreaks then these outbreaks can be classified as epidemic pandemic and endemic epidemic means when there is sudden appearance of the cases in a particular location there is large number of the cases seen at a particular area in a short time period pandemic is also an epidemic but it is seen at the same time at different geographical locations in different countries in different continents at the same time covid 19 is an example of the pandemic endemic are those infections in which a small number of the cases they are always present there is a detailed video on this epidemic pandemic and endemic you can find the link in the description box below and in the i button here also next are the emia infections these infections are having the suffix emia bacteremia septicemia and toxemia now see how they are different bacteremia means presence of bacteria in blood septicemia means the pathogen is present in the blood and it is also multiplying there is also the sepsis toxemia means the pathogen is there and it is also releasing the toxin products so that was our description of different types of infection hope this is useful for you stay tuned bye and take care